everybody. This is Kate Archibald, and you are on the webinar for Go Wellness, and we are going to be going over some awesome stuff today. With me, we have our gracious presenter and amazing uh, functional medicine practitioner and acupuncturist, Reagan Archibald. Reagan, what's up? Hey, everybody. Good to have you here. So today, I, uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, we're, we're going through genetics, heart disease. Wait, what's the topic you're going to be going over? Yeah, we're going to, yeah, that's it. Uh, genetics, heart disease, cholesterol, and belly fat. So I'm going to show you how to how to weave this all these topics together in a lunch or dinner seminar. This is our newest promo that we've been very uh, having a lot of success with. So I think you're going to enjoy it. And you're the first group to ever see this. Very cool. So if you guys haven't had a chance yet, uh, the screen you can see. Uh, this is the cover of Reagan's uh, his uh, book, Healthcare on Purpose. So it's thinking like Elon Musk to creating incredible healthcare for the future. So um, if you haven't had a chance, go to healthcareonpurpose.com. You can actually download that book for free, or just email us and send me like fifty cents, and I'll uh, I'll actually mail you a book. No, just kidding. You don't you don't have to send me the fifty cents, but. Um, yeah, so so go and download that book. It's it's an amazing read. It's it's not uh, too extremely long and time consuming. Uh, it'll it'll help uh, create some in inspiration for you to take your practice to the next level. All right, so we also have some events coming up. So you guys got to get ready and get excited. So we have our functional medicine boot camp level two. Uh, that's coming up November 12th, and that'll be, uh, it's going to be an awesome event. That's going to be an SLC, is what that should say, not SCL. Whoop. Um, Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, but uh, we'll, we'll be uh, doing some amazing stuff in Salt Lake City uh, November 12th. If you are a structural alignment uh, acupuncture, uh, if you're part of that program, We'll also be doing some stuff that afternoon, uh, November 11th on that Friday as well. So make sure you make it to Salt Lake. It is an event that um, really we go through all the nuts and bolts and really try to get a lot of implementation skills going with, with your clinic. So we have an admin and marketing side and we also have a practitioner side to go through different protocols, different case studies. Um, it's just an amazing event that uh, Reagan busts his ass to get going, and um, yeah, you guys, you guys can learn big stuff from it. Um, and then our next one is February twelfth, so uh, that'll be uh, the level three uh, functional medicine boot camp. Okay, cool. All right, everybody, uh, get registered if you're not, and watch your inbox because in just a few short hours we're going to be launching our very first um, report of findings transformation mastery course so this is going to be um, a course where you can uh, come and spend a day and we're just going to slug out all of the steps in the report of findings and for a short time there is there is this uh, very cool incentive for you to get uh, signed up for it and so uh, just watch your inbox that's all I gotta say um, it will close November 13th, so you'll have about a week to sign up for this this course. It's going to be offered in LA, December 3rd and 4th. Um, hey, Reagan, we got a question. Okay. Um, and the question was, do you need to do the levels in order? So the the functional medicine boot camps, do you have to do those level one, level two, level three? Uh, the the real answer to that is no. You don't have to. Um, we try to. Uh, make it so they're independent, but also they do build on each other. Exactly. Yeah, we designed them so that you can jump in at any point. So, level two, you'll be um, just getting right in the groove as if it was level one. Cool. Any other questions, Kate, or should we kick this thing off? Let's get it kicked off. Okay. Well, it's good to have you guys on here. 
Um, Dr. Antori, I want you to use this presentation um, in your next lecture. I know you've been having a lot of success, um, but this one is huge because what is the number one killer in America? It's heart disease. Um, so if you look at heart disease, cholesterol, genetics, and belly fat, these are all big topics that not a lot of people are talking about. Um, the way we talk about cholesterol is, well, let's um, get you on a statin or a drug. The way we talk about genetics is, well, my life is predetermined by my genetics, so why try to do anything different? If you look at belly fat, um, a lot of people see belly fat as, as the problem. That is the cause of the heart disease. And many doctors will argue with you that it's the belly fat that's causing heart disease, but I'm telling you the causes of heart disease, high cholesterol, and belly fat are all the same. And your genetics can actually turn on or turn off this, this really key marker. And so I'm going to see how smart you are right now. Do you know which marker that is? Um, if not, then I'll ask you again at the end. Um, all right, so if, if you look at it, when you're starting these presentations, <clears throat> you always want to jump into, are we in a health crisis? And then I always ask the audience, why are you in a health crisis? And one of the big things the British Medical Journal released is they said 85% of all medical procedures and surgeries are scientifically unproven. 90% of all diseases prevalent today are not treatable with orthodox medical procedures. Now that's, that's a little disturbing because where are people running to when it comes to getting health care? Well, they're actually running into an environment that is designed, a healthcare environment that's designed to treat acute care and designed to fix very severe problems. It's heroic medicine. It's not a medicine that was ever intended to treat chronic conditions. Now, we won't get into the entire history of that, but if you look at prescription drugs, more people are on medication now than they've ever been on. Now, if you even look at the, the statistics from 2010 to 2015, just a five-year time span, the amount of prescription medications being used in America went up 13%. I mean, I think it's crazy because more and more people are becoming aware of the pharmaceutical industry and people are very uh, knowledgeable about about the dangers of it and about the amount of, of um, side effects that come with pharmaceutical medications and, and 80 percent of Americans are looking for a different solution but the problem is um, the pharmaceutical companies are still winning they're still coming up with new drugs they're still using the same flawed research to say that, that they've got a safer method and people are taking more drugs than ever. In fact, if you look at the amount of deaths that are caused, it's 128,000 deaths per year from properly written prescription drugs in the United States and another 200,000 deaths in Europe. Um, if you look at our healthcare system, it's very fragmented. You go to a pulmonologist when you've got lung issues, you go to an internal specialist when you need a prescription refill, you go to a proctologist for your prostate. You go to a rheumatologist if you have joint pain. You go to a neurologist if you have nerve issues and so on and so forth. But really, I, I met with a, a patient yesterday, and I saw him about five years ago. His wife's been a patient for a long time, and she said, look, Kurt is not doing well. He's passed out twice. He looks sick. He's, he's got these weird little uh, ticks in his lips and in his hands. He almost looks um, like he's got some kind of nervous disorder, but he's he does not look like himself. And I, I said, well, bring him in. And so she got him in on my schedule, and I met with him yesterday. And I was shocked. I looked at him, and I said, Kurt, what happened? And he's like, I don't know. I was very healthy until about six months ago, and I was walking up the stairs. I passed out. And so we thought it was an issue with my heart. And so luckily um, his uh, cousin is a cardiologist, went to the cardiologist, had every test ran. Cardiologist said, no, nope, there's nothing wrong with your heart. Everything looks good. So where did the cardiologist send him? To a neurologist. The neurologist ran tests. Everything looks fine. Maybe there's some type of uh, medication that will help you with this problem. And so he went to an internal specialist. 
everything looked normal and now they're getting on that route of well let's try some medication but Kurt it's not he knows it's there's something deeper going on that not that that's not treatable with just a medication and so just in a simple um, simple little ROF you know if you're following our report of findings patterns you'll know how to administer and deliver a report of findings It's very powerful and just in that simple conversation we found out that Kurt had been exposed to meth uh, he, he would clean up meth labs he actually worked for the state of Utah's disaster recovery services and he managed that for 30 years so he went in and he would clean up any um, old areas where we we have a hospital massive hospital IHC that's built in the middle of the valley and before that hospital was built there was uh, a lot of smeldering and and mine tailings and a lot of um, metals that were that needed to be cleaned up so he'd go to these areas and he'd wear a hazmat suit and he would clean them up and the problem is he did that for 30 years and he would clean up gas spills and he would because you know in Utah we actually we have uh, gas lines that run through here I have a gas line that runs less than a mile away from my house believe it or not um, we do um, a lot of uh, gas gas mining up here um, but he, he was cleaning up all these environmental toxic areas and he would steel mills there's lots of steel mills that were here 30 years ago and and so you know that was his career and I, I asked him I said well did they te test heavy metal did you tell him I said he said yeah I told the internist and they found they ran a blood test and they didn't find any abnormal levels of lead that's all they tested was lead and so I just you know, simply asked him, I said, well, did they look at C-reactive protein? I looked at the test they ran, it's very basic. So um, any infection, you know, we just started, I just started asking the right questions. And Kurt just said, I just, I want to work with, with a team that will really look into my case because I, it takes me two or three weeks just to get the doctor's office to call me back after I've had tests ran. And in the meantime, I feel like I'm dying. And so one of the things that I offered him I said well look at our clinic you can bring all the tests you've had ran we will review those as a medical team we are going to order additional tests so we can actually figure out what the cause is and Kurt was a hundred percent on board he signed up for our six-month program paid in full and the funny thing is his wife who's been a patient of mine for about 10 years I could never get her to uh, talk to me about a program. She didn't want to run labs. She didn't want to change her lifestyle. She knew Diet Coke would be on my list. And he signs up, and I said, "Judy, are you sure you don't want to do this?" And you know, she's like, "No, no, I'll let you know on his next visit, which was about a week away." And she said, "I, you know, I know you're going to have me give up my Diet Coke and make some changes." And I said, "I know, it's all right, no worries." And then as I'm walking out of the room, she's like, "You know what? Wait, Reagan, I want to do it." So, so she signed up too. So it was really cool. But one of the big disconnects from his health was this fragmented healthcare system, and nobody was talking to each other. Nobody's looking at the whole body; they're just looking at systems. So that's part of our health crisis you look at the insurance companies you look at the newest research on what these guys are making and Stephen Hemsley is making a measly two hundred and fifty four thousand dollars per day so he's got a budget tight I mean that's um, it's hard to make ends meet with that kind of salary Mark Bertinelli his salary dropped from oh, what I, happened I, to Mark like the guy you know what um, Aetna just didn't do quite as well and the year that he was just killing it um, he was making about twice as much um, it, it, I think uh, that was the year he sold a lot of his stock options and kinda cashed in so, but look at Stephen Hemsley's crushing it so <laughs> yeah crazy um, you look at what we're up against you know we've got food that's not the same food that our grandparents ate food is has more chemicals in it than we than it has ever been in it and unfortunately what you're looking at is now you're looking at this merger between Monsanto's who's the number one chemical producer and makes pesticides and genetically modified crops now what's happened is Bayer is actually trying to buy out this the chemical giant for 66 billion dollars and so what that means is Bayer will now be the world's leader in producing chemicals and Bayer is also one of the world leaders in producing medicine believe it or not so 
we've got this big health crisis and unless you and I do something about it, it's just going to get worse. So biggest killer in our country is heart disease. Number one cause of death in the United States, over 625,000 deaths every year and it's preventable. So if you look at the cause of it, this is a picture of, of an artery that's got arterial sclerosis in it. That means that's where the, the artery starts to get hardened and then you have blood particles that will clot in that artery and anytime you have a loss of blood moving through arteries then the tissue can't get oxygen and the tissue dies and that's called ischemia and that is heart disease. Ischemia is where you have oxygenation that gets lost to the tissue and the tissue dies so it's like necrotic tissue and that's why some people never fully recover from heart disease because that blockage in the artery it causes a diminishing of, of um, oxygen and then that tissue dies and that's why people can become out of breath very quickly they can feel more tired because their hearts just not getting the oxygen it needs because these vessels get plugged uh, the Mayo Clinic they said the plaque buildup thickens I want to ask them what was the cause of heart disease its plaque buildup thickens and stiffens our artery walls which can inhibit blood flow through your arteries to your organs and tissues Arterial sclerosis is also the most common cause of cardiovascular disease. It can be it, it can be caused by correctable problems such as an unhealthy diet, lack of exercise, being overweight, and smoking. So, is part of this health crisis our problem? And if you think about it, a lot of us are not very proactive, and we don't exercise. We don't move our body. The other thing is we have too much stress. We have physical, we have chemical, we have emotional stress. And I think everyone on this webinar has heard me talk about that. How about genetics? Do genetics play a factor in our ability to get rid of disease or contract disease? And in fact, there is some very compelling research that, that has pointed to a specific gene called your MTHFR, your methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase gene and this gene when it's mutated you're going to end up with more inflammation in your body you'll have higher levels of homocysteine versus proper levels of glutathione which is a natural antioxidant which gets rid of oxidative stress and inflammation so we'll talk a, a little bit about MTHFR but what we found is inflammation is this key component that causes plaque to be laid down in your arterial walls if you think about inflammation, what happens when when you eat sugar, for example, and your your blood sugar goes up, it gets too high in your body, your pancreas starts pushing out insulin like crazy to pull the sugar out of the blood vessels so that it doesn't damage the arterial walls. But if you're American and you're eating 150 pounds of sugar every year, then what's going to happen is that sugar is going to damage the arterial walls and then it's actually cholesterol that comes in to repair the, that damaged wall. And so one of the things that, that triggers one of those, those markers, those amino acids that trigger this inflammatory response is called homocysteine. So if you're predisposed to high homocysteine, there's a genetic test that we can do for you called MTHFR and that will actually help us isolate what's what your chances are of having higher levels of inflammation and interestingly enough this MTHFR gene it can turn on or turn off the majority of the genes that cause chronic disease like heart disease and diabetes and, and obesity and so it's a very simple test now that we can actually look at because what we found is that genetics are responsible for maybe about five percent of the chronic diseases in our country but if you could find a way to turn the gene on or turn the gene off, that's where you can really start to thrive in your health. So other factors that affect inflammation, of course, is poor diet, uh, long-term vegan, uh, junk food. Um, what you need is leafy greens, beans, um, a little bit of fruit, um, oily fish, meat liver. Um, smoking can in inactivate B6. You can have malabsorption from leaky gut, which we'll talk about. You can have a decrease in stomach acid. You can have medication, acid blockers, methotrexate, which is commonly used for rheumatoid arthritis. Does anyone in the room have rheumatoid arthritis? Yep, so that's one of the common treatments there. Um, you can also see it with birth control. Um, 
and any kind of uh, beta blocker or hypertensive medication. These things can all affect inflammation. Diseases like hypothyroidism, kidney failure, cancer, pregnancy, these diseases can in the long run cause more inflammation and then toxic exposure. Kind of like I talked about my, my patient Kurt who has been exposed to high levels of toxicity from meth labs to heavy metals um, to a toxic uh, air quality in, in Utah. Um, it, it led to ultimately his you know, breakdown in his body's overall nervous system. Um, so genetics and methylation, some of the side effects that you'll find if you have this MTHFR mutation, you'll find you'll have more insomnia, you'll have muscle and joint pain, you'll have more rashes, you'll have increased anxiety and palpitations, that's when your heart beats really fast. Um, palpitations is the, the general um, definition of it is one's awareness of one's own heartbeat. You'll have more nausea, more vomiting, you'll have headaches and migraines and then decreased mood, severe depression, suicidal thoughts, all those things. And what we found that, that will trigger this inflammatory response is poor gut health. Uh, a lot of you may not be aware of this, but your digestive system is, is the underpinnings for your inflammatory cycle. So if you have a, an infection in your gut, if you've had bad microbes, you're going to have increased inflammation and that's going to start diminishing your quality of life and that will be part of the components that, that cause this issue with heart disease. Uh, bacteria can often deplete tyrosine, which is a precursor to dopamine, and dopamine is that neurotransmitter that also helps you make better decisions. So the poor quality of, of gut health that you have, the harder it is to make decisions that are going to lead to better health and a more transformative experience in your life. So a lot of times you may have certain cravings. Who in here gets cravings? And a lot of times those cravings aren't necessarily driven by you being a bad person who likes Twinkies. It may actually be more the, the, the bad gut microbes that are living in your body and, and they want that quick sugar for a fuel source. So leaky gut is one of the end products that can happen when you have this dysbiosis and what that means is you'll have in, intestinal permeability so that you've got this little this single cell layer thick of an intestinal lining and anytime you get inflammation or you get pockets of bacteria that overgrows what happens is these, these little undigested food particles leak out of your gut and your immune system behaves as if there is a foreign invader in your body because essentially there is. And so your immune system will, will start creating inflammation to handle those, those food particles that are attacking your body. And then as your, in, as your immune system starts to engage and you call in the troops, then your immune system sweeps the whole body. It says, well, what's going on in the sinuses? And then you get more food sensitivities and colds. What's going on in the brain? And you'll start to get a breakdown of, of your brain function and neurological function, and depression can show up, anxiety, ADHD. Your skin will start being attacked. You know, your immune system's just looking, and then your immune system will start to see these tissues as a threat. So it will start to to think that your own body is attacking you, yourself and so the immune system will go in and attack those tissues. That's where you'll have rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, headaches, all these things. So one of the key components to reversing heart disease is looking at your genetics, looking at MTHFR, understanding how the gut microbes are doing and then really watching what you eat because a lot of times cholesterol, we look at it and we say, well, my doctor, all he wants to do for my heart disease is lower the cholesterol. Now, let's look at this. We've got triglycerides, you've got HDL, you've got LDL. If you can just shoot those things down like Clint Eastwood in a country western, then you win the game, right? And do we have drugs that actually lower cholesterol? And how many of you have heard of cholesterol being the number one component for heart disease. Um, a lot of us have had drugs pushed on us. Ascot, the Prosper, Jupiter, all these drugs and it's a big chemical industry, a big, big pharmaceutical industry get pushed on us but unfortunately we've had less than 1.5 percent reduction in heart attacks and strokes and I would, I would 
you know, dare to say that that's not necessarily from the medications. If you look at cholesterol-lowering medications, you look at Lipitor, for example, Lipitor reduces risk of heart attack by 36%. Well, that was done, this, this research was done in a large clinical study, as you can see from the asterisks, for those of you who are lawyers in the room, that clinical study was done where, where they took a large group of 1,500 people and gave them a placebo, and then they had another group of 1,500 people and gave them Lipitor. And the funny thing is, is there was a, a 2% of the people in the placebo group that had a heart attack, and 3% of the, the excuse me, there's 3% of the patients taking the sugar pill, or placebo had a heart attack compared to 2% of the patients taking Lipitor. And so if you look at the relative difference between 3% and 2%, it's 36%. And these, these studies can be very misleading because that is not enough to warrant the use of a medication, especially with the side effects, which we'll jump into. Now, what are some of the side effects that you've experienced thus far for those of you who are on statins? And usually I'll find out, you know, how many of you are on, medic on cholesterol lowering medication or know somebody who is. So um, here's a, a study way back in 1995. The researchers found that there's no evidence linking high cholesterol levels in women with heart disease. And if you look at when Lipitor was launched onto the market, between about 1990 and, and 2000, um, Lipitor was making billions of dollars in profits every year. It's, the, it's one of the cheapest medications to make. Very easy to make a statin. And in the United States, we spend about 10 times more money on statins than anywhere else. And one of the things that the pharmaceutical companies are doing is they always have a patent on their drug. And so they're trying to get this um, name brand drug out for as long as they can until their patent runs out. And then what happens? You get a generic drug. Even though that generic drug is exactly the same thing, unfortunately, placebo is so powerful that a lot of people don't respond as well to the generic as they do to the name brand. And so they go back to the name brand and like, oh, I feel better. But all it is is placebo because they have had their brains completely destroyed through marketing so that they believe that is the only drug that's really going to work for them. Um, if you look at the New England Journal of Medicine, after four studies in 2010 involving more than 33,000 people, they concluded medications did not reduce heart disease despite lower blood pressure, lower blood sugar, lower cholesterol, nor a combination of these factors. In fact, the study re revealed many devastating side effects, including an increased risk for cardiac event. So these drugs, even though we have the ability to quote-unquote prevent heart disease, we're not winning this battle. And if you look at cholesterol, cholesterol is necessary. It's, it's, it's a parent molecule for your sex hormones. If you want to have low testosterone and, and men start to grow moobs and get hair in weird places, then get your cholesterol below 160. You'll see what it feels like. Your brain will turn off. Cholesterol is necessary to produce bile acids. So if you want to break down toxins and get them out of your body and also emulsify and digest fats, you're going to need your bile acids. It's a, an essential component for all cell membranes. So your cell membranes, one of the most important things they do is if you have a healthy cell membrane, then you can take in what your cells need for fuel, and it will protect the mitochondria, which are the powerhouse of the cell. If you have poor cell membranes, then your skin's going to sag, you're not going to be as vibrant, you're going to lose that vibration because the cell membrane is, is what, I don't know if you remember anything from like high school um, chemistry, but those electrons are very important and those electrons are how your, your cells communicate and if you don't have a healthy cell membrane, you're not going to have good communication. Uh, cholesterol is important in the immune system. It's a parent molecule for vitamin D synthesis and we've seen all the studies with low vitamin D and autoimmunity is a key component, so you need cholesterol for that. Your body can't function without it. I mean, if you look at it, one quarter of your brain is composed, uh, composed of cholesterol. Cholesterol is necessary for memory, learning, and fast thinking. It's used to make neurotransmitters. And once again, it's been pushed on the public because it's one of the most profitable prescription drugs in the world. One in two senior men are taking this, and one in three senior women are, are taking these drugs. And maybe in some cases, it's not necessary. And what we are finding that it's doing to your body is it's depleting CoQ10. So one of the first things you can do 
if you are on cholesterol lowering medications, specifically statins, get on some CoQ10. You're fine, we're finding there's a reduction in sex hormones. It's negatively affecting memory. It interferes with serotonin receptors, so more depression. It may be associated with higher risk of diabetes and a higher risk of cancer. And in fact, Stephen Sinatra, what he found, he's uh, the, the founder of metabolic cardiology. He's the, the author of that. He said cholesterol level of 160 or less has been linked to depression, aggression, cerebral hemorrhage, and loss of sex drive. So maybe there's something else. I mean, we looked at the food pyramid and, you know, think about it back in the 60s and the 50s. I don't know if you realize this, but one of the things that happened to Dwight Eisenhower, who was amazing, an amazing president, arguably one of the most, most uh, talented and impactful generals ever in the world, general of the United States Army, he is the one that decided, put all the eggs in one basket, we're storming the shores of Normandy, they did it on Christmas morning, and essentially that's what turned the tides in World War II. Otherwise, you know, who knows what the world would be like if he hadn't made that decision. But Dwight Eisenhower, shortly after he became President of the United States, he had a massive heart attack. And so he sent his researchers out to discover what caused his heart attack. And what they told him is it was saturated fats. And so fats have gotten this bad rap for decades. And you can still find fat free and I still have patients all the time that tell me, well, I don't eat any fats and I'm healthy and I just eat vegetables and grains and whole grains. And So if you look at the food pyramid, I mean, we've got bread, cereal, rice and pasta. That was the foundation for the food pyramid for years. And, you know, unfortunately, this, this whole grain diet is causing a lot of the inflammation in, in, our, in our bodies. We went away from eggs and bacon and with vegetables in the morning, and we went over to this whole grain diet. But really, I mean, the, the real rebel and the real cause of this inflammatory process, if you, if you look at it from a dietary perspective, is not the cholesterol that we're eating. 80% of cholesterol is produced in your liver, and it does not come from your foods. So that little bit of cholesterol that we thought was bad for you in eggs, actually it's the lecithin in the egg yolk that will neutralize high cholesterol levels from the grains and sugars you're eating. So actually eggs can be one of the, the cures. It could be the anecdote for high cholesterol. All right, so let's, let's just stop. I, I just want to pause this and ask any questions that anyone has so far. Everyone's doing good? Cool. Oh, good. And what? So we got a question from Charles. You see that? Mm-mm. So I don't. Studies show 70% of arteri arterial blockage is poly and mono monounsaturated fatty acids, and there was no saturated fat found in the blockage. That's crazy. Where did you find that study, um, Charles? Um, okay. Yeah. He, he sent it to you. Cool. All right. I'll look that up. I appreciate that. Yeah, I think it's pretty interesting. I mean, saturated fats, we talk about cell membranes, and saturated fat is the, the most necessary ingredient for having healthy cell membranes. So um, pretty fascinating. You know, if you look at the food pyramid, it was the number one contributor to heart disease. It contributes to inflammation in the arteries. There is a link between diabetes, obesity, and heart disease. It's going to drive up insulin, raise blood pressure increases triglycerides and causes glycation and uh, it, it's kind of interesting the way that we've we've approached this because really what causes a plaque formation from is is from sugar um, sugar is what causes those advanced glycation end products which if you look at the acronym for that we call it the aging products if you want to age faster just eat a lot of sugar and I'm like the rest of you like I love a good dessert I, I, I do not mind sitting down and just really indulging in, um, you know, some type of tiramisu or creme brulee or um, there's lots of good things that I like, but I realize that it causes me to age faster. My joints don't feel as well. My brain doesn't turn on like it, like it could. And so one thing you'll, you'll find with eating sugar is it's going to harden your cardiovascular structures. 
and we put the emphasis on the wrong place and this misinformation that the American population has been given for the last 70 years is part of this obesity epidemic. I mean almost 70 percent of Americans are overweight or obese and that's not slowing down. Uh, if you're a kid, unfortunately, diabetes is epidemic. Um, certain races, if you're if you're born Hispanic or African American, your chance of having diabetes is 75 percent. It's crazy, and a lot of this is coming from us eating more packaged and processed foods than fresh foods. In some parts of the country, people actually eat 33 percent more of their food that comes from a package than they do from fresh foods. So. Yes, the eating sugar, it causes improper filtering of the kidneys. That's why you'll get very thirsty. You'll think, oh, I'll just eat, I'll just drink more water if I'm eating all this sugar. And you'll just start putting more and more burden on your kidneys, and that will age your skin. I can't tell you how many patients we get them off sugar, and they feel amazing. So this is not something that your doctor is going to talk to you about. You may say diet and exercise. That's what's going to change it. If you if your cholesterol is high, I want you to try and lose 20 pounds, and I want you to eat better, and then come back, and if the cholesterol is still not down, then we'll get you on a statin, right? And the problem is he's not looking at the cause. Now, a lot of you have gone to your doctor, and your doctor has ran your tests, and you say, well, your, your labs all look normal. I've got good news for you. And you're wondering, well, why do I still feel like crap? Now one of the reasons, one of the things we do when you come into our office is we actually look at your labs. Any lab that you've had around in the past, bring it with you. And in this initial visit, we're going to look at your labs and we'll find out when you're, you're a little too late, when, when things are non-functional, when you're in the disease pattern. But you know, when anyone can tell you that. But what we're going to do is we're going to show you a functional lab range. So we're going to bring those, those parameters and narrow it because labs base their, their numbers off of a bell curve. So if you fit within 95% of the population in this bell curve, then you're considered healthy. But it's just not factual. Diseases are very, they're, they're very low. The diseases start to show up when your body's had about a 40 to 50% loss of function. And then symptoms show up when you've had about a 60 to 70 percent loss of function. That's when you start getting symptoms like shortness of breath, you get dizziness, you, might, you may get you know, chronic joint pain that never goes away. That's when you start getting constipated and sluggish. So we, wanna, we want to avoid you getting into those disease and symptom ranges. So we have this theory, we, this, this motto, we say we test, we don't guess. So we want to look at your HDL and LDL particle size. We want to look at triglyceride, C-reactive protein, homocysteine, interleukin-6, fibrinogen. We want to look at your serum ferritin. All these things are important markers to understanding how well the health of your arterial lining is. The other thing we want to look at is testosterone. We found that men, if you can keep your testosterone at a higher level, you're far less likely to end up with arterial sclerosis. So we would like you to keep it around the 650 to 800 range. Women, if you grow, if you get testosterone that that level, you're growing some facial hair and you're going to have a low voice. Um, otherwise, no problems. Cortisol. We're going to look at the main stress hormone in, your hormone in your body called cortisol because cortisol influences everything else and all the other hormones. So we're going to look at cortisol and base it off of a circadian rhythm because cortisol is going to start out higher in the morning. As your day goes on, cortisol will start to stabilize and then as the nighttime comes up, your melatonin will, will increase in proportion to your cortisol. The other test that we want to run is we want to look at your genetics. Now this is my genetic uh, test. This is a, a test that I did not too long ago and I found out that I too, I had issues with MTHFR with MTR, MTRR, and COMT. And so once I understood that, now I can take the right B vitamins so that I can mitigate the amount of inflammation I have in my body. And this also helps me diminish the amount of autoimmunity that I'm susceptible to because methylation, once again, is what lowers that homocysteine. You can do the same test with a company called 23andMe. How many of you have done this? Hopefully uh, all of you on this webinar and for those of you who listen to this in the future are getting your testing done and 23andMe is actually getting much quicker in their turnaround so we're using them a lot more um, and it's it's uh, much more comprehensive than just the cell science. The only thing you don't get 
is the homocysteine. That's got to be tested through blood. Inflammatory systems, if you get symptoms, if you get headaches, that can mean you've got too much inflammation in your body. If you've got anxiety, that can be from too much inflammation. If you're tired and sluggish, once again, these are symptoms of inflammation and in the, in the long term, they can lead to heart disease. They can lead to more belly fat. They can make you feel older and look older. Depression, that's an inflammatory symptom. Hell, hair loss and thinning. Constipation, these are all inflammatory symptoms. And weight gain. And what we found is that the more inflammation that you have in particular systems in your body, you're going to put on fat in different areas. So if you look at the adrenals, if your adrenals and cortisol isn't regulated, you're going to tend to put belly fat on your lower belly. If you have inflammation and issues in your ovaries or if you have PCOS or insulin resistance, you can tend to put weight around your midsection and your thighs as a woman. Uh, men, you can even do this if you have low levels of testosterone, higher levels of estrogen, especially those of you men who eat a lot of soy products. Thyroid, you're going to put weight on everywhere, so you get fat on your arms, your legs, your chin. And then liver, liver, you can get the pot belly. Now, this pot belly will show up in insulin resistance like it will in, in ovarian issues. So you can get that pot belly. And, and one of the things that your doctor will tell you is that belly is one of the contributing factors for heart disease, thinking that the belly is going to be the cause of your heart disease. But you have to take a step back and say, well, what's causing this belly to come on in the first place? Well, it's too much inflammation in your liver. And that inflammation has caused your body to become insulin resistant. So that means you cannot take sugar into cells where it belongs. So the sugar stays circulating in your blood longer than it needs to. And the sugar starts damaging that arterial wall. And then what fixes that damage? Cortisol or cortisol, cholesterol. So cholesterol comes in and repairs that arterial wall. So one of the biggest things you want to do to find the right answers and to really be successful in transforming your health is first you've got to support your detoxification and enzyme pathways. You've got to identify the food sensitivities that's causing internal inflammation and then identify hormonal imbalances. Like I mentioned, cortisol is one of the hormones, but you also need to look at testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, all of the hormones that your body makes. We want to find out, is there an infection? Infections cause inflammation. If you've got a yeast overgrowth, fungus overgrowth, if you've got parasites or bacteria that are out of control, those things need to be resolved. You've got to resolve the gut dysbiosis and you can do that through dietary changes, through correcting vitamin deficiencies, correcting inflammation. There's different herbs that we use to naturally treat inflammation. There's different food protocols that you'll want to follow. And then we want to eliminate leaky gut and make sure that your gut barriers are as healthy as possible. So that's how we get help. And I, I hope tonight you guys have learned something because the promise I made at the very beginning of, of this presentation was I'm going to give you better information than any doctor before me has on what the cause of heart disease is, high cholesterol, and belly fat. So how many of you would feel like I've, I've kept my promise? And if not, then I'll just keep going. So I know all of you are just, you, you're like, Reagan, you actually didn't say anything, but... Um, usually that's how you, you guys know that's how you're going to start this out. So the other promise that I made for you is that I would show you a way that you can come into our clinic and get help. So how many of you are here for yourself and how many of you would really like to get help? Okay, good. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to take a couple minutes and talk about our program and how we get such amazing results with people who have been told there's nothing that can be done, it's genetic, it's, it, it, it's something that's not reversible. Luckily we have medications and those medications will save you, but yeah, you know, how many of you are looking for different answers because that's what we do and, and essentially I'll just take a couple minutes and talk about our program and then for those of you who feel like this is the right fit for you and you're looking to transform your health with a team of very dedicated providers, then I'll offer you an opportunity to come into our clinic at a discounted rate on your initial consultation. So first thing we have to address in the five pillars of health is your digestive health and detoxification. If we're not addressing overgrowth of pathogenic bacteria, if we're not getting rid of parasites and yeast, then your body won't be able to detoxify. 
your, your body will remain in this constant state of inflammation. So that's one of the pillars of health. When you have great digestive health, your brain turns on. You can make neurotransmitters easily. You can feel um, alive. You get energy from your food. You don't slump in the afternoon. Um, so the second pillar is nutrition. Once again, nutrition is going to be different for everybody in this room. Some people are going to need more of certain foods than others. Some of you may have reactivities, immune reactions from food. So what we're going to do is a test to determine what foods we want you to avoid for a certain period of time and also we'll look at micronutrient imbalances so that we can see what nutrition your body is lacking in. And so we'll have you avoid certain foods for a certain period of time and then we'll also have you add in foods where your, your depletions are. The third pillar of health is hormones. Now when we talk about hormones, we're talking about DHEA, pregnenolone, progesterone, cortisol, and then all the sex hormones. Hormones are a necessary component of health. If you don't believe me, then try to have an imbalance in them and you'll start feeling like a crazy person very quickly. The fourth pillar of health is exercise. Exercise is medicine, just like food is medicine. So we're going to show you exactly what exercises will enhance your health and what exercises might diminish your health. And then finally, we're going to focus on the fifth pillar of health, which is your brain health. And brain health is one of the key components because the more clarity you can have in your brain, the easier it is to make uh, de decisions that are going to lead to your overall health and wellness. And having brain health will help you learn quicker, and that's part of our program is we do we do a lot of education, we do a lot of training and teaching. We tell people, you know, this is a program where we don't just give you a fish and feed you for a day, we actually show you how to fish. And so having a healthy brain is something where you will be engaged in a lifelong learning process when it comes to your health, not just a symptom-based treatment. So how many of you are ready for a new approach? Okay, great. So three ways we get you started is first thing we have to get the right tests ordered. Once we have the right test ordered, then we can determine what treatments are going to correct the underlying cause. And then there's going to be teaching. This is the education curriculum that we talk about. So teaching is one of the key components for you to understand how to keep and maintain your health for a long, long life. I want all of you in this room to live to be 150. Um, we provide mentoring and accountability. I don't know if any of you have tried to make behavioral changes on your own or, or create new habits, but it's not easy. I mean, it takes 21 days to create a new habit and having a mentor can really help you navigate those waters. A mentor can also show you how to get things done quicker. So it, a mentor can help you avoid a lot of pitfalls. And then the accountability factor is, you know, you realize you create all these new habits, but if no one keeps you accountable, once your willpower runs out, then it's over. So having someone to hold you accountable is really nice because you know you're going to have to check in with somebody and in a sense you put the responsibility on them instead of your own shoulders. We have Eastern and Western doctors who work side by side. We, we talk to lots of very talented doctors and clinicians through the labs that we, we order your tests through. So we have multiple resources that we can lean on when it comes to your health. Now when was the last time you actually had a medical team that sat down and actually looked at your labs? I mean I can't tell you how many thousands of patients have come into my clinic throughout the 12 years that I've been practicing and they'll tell me, my doctor, nobody ever reads my labs. I had to call my clinic to ask why I had all these low numbers and then why I had all these high numbers. And they didn't, they didn't even take the time. They just sent me the labs and that was it. Or I was, you know, or the other thing I hear a lot is my doctor told me everything's normal. Even though there's numbers on here that aren't normal, they didn't even mention that to me. So, you know, I, I think this is going to be a program where you're going to find that the behind the scenes work, the research that we do, the scientific investigation, and then the team deliberation about what the next step is for you and your health, that is the most valuable piece that we offer. It's the piece where you're not even in the office watching us. So ask yourself these questions. How would life be if I were able to have more energy and correct my health issues? How has my life been affected? My relationships, my ability to work, my ability to enjoy life, on a scale of 1 to 10, how motivated am I really to take care of my problem? Because one thing we want to do is we don't just want to treat your symptoms. 
Symptoms are the very last thing to show up. We want to treat your overall body. So, so come in for an initial consultation, get a mentor, and let's, let's help you out. And then you guys know how to jump into this. So hopefully that helps you all. Um, cool. So great. Any questions before we, we close up this webinar? Make sure that you go into a strong close. Um, we've trained on this many a time, so I just wanted to give the overview of what this webinar looks like. You go into the same close, you offer the $200 discount off of your initial consultation. Do you charge for this visit? Yes. They get the, they get the reduction in their payments in that fee because they pay that night. So, um, cool. Any questions that anyone's got? And Charles, I can't wait to get that uh, that study from you. Um, and everybody, if you have not signed up for our event coming up, it's in about 10 days. It's coming up pretty quick. And this event is going to be amazing. It's a boot camp. We're going to have the, the uh, hair test, the allergy uh, testing center from all the way from the UK, uh, Andrew West. And he's going to be joining us. We're going to have natural stacks there. We're going to be talking about nootropics. Um, and then the other thing that we're going to be doing is, is we're going to be taking your team and taking them through their own boot camp. So they'll learn how to put together a report of findings, how to use the model of health form. They're going to learn the 10-10-10 secret to scheduling so that you can maximize the amount of outflow and minimize the amount of wasted time in your office. Um, we're going to be training on how to build successful teams, how to put in health coaching. So all these things are going to be covered at the boot camp. And then once again, check your, your inbox because we're going to be sending out a very special invitation to some of you to attend our Report of Findings Mastery. And this is going to be in LA December 3rd and 4th. So hope to see you all there and uh, get registered as quickly as possible for that. It's not going to be up for long. So. All right, Kay, do you have anything you want to end up with? Um, no, it looks like we have a couple questions, though. Um, let's see. Oh, so uh, Charles posted the... Oh, there it is, uh, cholesterol on the website. Oh, yeah, that's a great website. All right, yeah, and awesome. Charles, I will let you know when this presentation is available. <clears throat> um, it's it's just brand new, so we haven't got it on the site yet. Um, and then, uh, uh, White Eagle, we have it's uh, healthcareonpurpose.com is where you can go to get the free book uh, by Reagan. Yeah, so I just sent it to everybody, so there should be a link there. Um, just go to healthcareonpurpose.com and download that book. Share it with as many people as you can. As you know, our mission is to transform healthcare in America, and we do it by training you guys on how to be better practitioners. And and we're here in the trenches. We do it every single day. So, um, hope everyone enjoyed this. Kate, I'm gonna I'll turn it over to you now. Yeah. Uh, everybody have an awesome day, and we will see you at the Functional Medicine Boot Camp November 12th in Salt Lake City. Can't wait to see you guys. Bye-bye. Love you guys.